Today on Beerus TV, we all know proper fish quarantine is best practice, but what if that ship has sailed and the fish is already in the tank? It's time to talk fish parasite and disease management. Hey, this is Ryan with Beerus TV's five minute mini series on UV sterilizers, direct answers to the most common UV questions because information should never be a barrier. It's time to get a deeper understanding of how we manage disease and fish parasites in the tank. By the end of this episode, I think you'll have some legit paths to reducing the chances that you run into issues, some of which cost nothing, require near zero effort, and just avoiding some low percentage decisions. UV can play a role in today's discussion, but just a small component of a much larger picture. I think it's been drilled into all of us that proper quarantine is the best practice, but it's also not clear what proper quarantining is. It seems difficult to most, and to be frank, without proper guidance, the success rates are also fairly low. I've personally attempted quarantine my fish a few times at the beginning of my reefing journey, and all I ever really achieved was killing the fish, so I stopped. I'm pretty sure that I'm not alone here, but it's time to up my own game and share the journey with you. Related to that, if you're not going to select the path of proper quarantine, I think most of us need to accept we're taking one of two approaches, either active disease and parasite management, or the dump, pray, and hope for the best method. I guess I have to say I've done a mix of the two in the past and of course had mixed results to go with it. If you've been tracking along with this series, you may already know that I've been particularly inspired by a recent reef to reef thread I came across by Humblefish, a thought leader on fish parasite and disease control called Ick Eradication versus Ick Management. More or less, he provided me a moment of clarity where if I don't actively pick one of these two paths, I'm just putting my head in the sand and avoiding eye contact with the real issue. That approach means risk today when the fish go in, as well as every single stressful event the tank goes through in the future. Proper QT is on the near horizon for BRS TV. We look to the thought leaders, do our research, and share a BRS TV quarantine mini series that makes the process easy to understand and implement, but more importantly, produces reliable results. Taking a step forward and increasing the success rates of quarantine for anyone who wants to do that in the future. However, I also believe we need to own the reality that a majority of reefers in the past and likely in the future will be practicing disease management rather than full quarantine, meaning accepting that many of these parasites are already or will make their way into our tanks, so let's manage that fact and increase the success rates here as well. It's just not helpful to ignore that this is the case. It's time to embrace that many of us are already on this path or will be and move forward. The first step in that is go out and read the Humble Fish thread. I'll put a link in the comments below. You don't need to read the entire thread to get the value. Just two minutes reading that first post may change the way that you reef and then go from there. Because you're already here watching this video, there are some basics. I believe the real point of this thread is QT and eradication is the best practice and what we'd like to see everyone practice because disease management route is only one wrong move one power outage, or stressful event from the management route failing you and your pets. This is a chance to learn from all the other reefers that have come before us and take a more productive path. But also acknowledgement that the management route is what most of us started with and likely are going to be the most common route. So let's do that to the best of our ability as well. Go in and form and produce the best results. There seem to be four components to that and I'm just gonna share Humble Fish's words directly. Number one, utilizing the biggest UV sterilizer you can fit or afford. While UV will probably never zap all the free swimmers, it will keep their numbers down so the fish can better cope with the ones remaining. A dye time filter can also be used to remove those free swimmers. The only part that I'll add here is the UV needs to be installed correctly. The flow rate's tuned to the goal and run 24 seven for it to be effective at zapping those parasites in the free swimming stage. So right tool, right job, installed correctly. Without those considerations, UV is likely a waste of time. Number two, boost your fish's immune systems through proper nutrition. This means feeding a wide range of live and frozen nutritious foods, not just flake and pellets. Feed nori as it's loaded with vitamins. Also soak fish food in vitamin supplements such as Celcon, Zocon, Vitachem to further enhance health. Omega-3 and 6 fish oils are cheap soaking alternatives. There's been a lot of talk about upping the fish nutrition game lately and this fits that bill. End of story, put some thought into it and the fish will reward you. Thought means thinking about the types of fish that you have and managing to that. Active fish like Anthias and Chromis burn energy fast and benefit from more frequent feedings. Some benefiting from small plankton type foods. Tang's obviously benefiting from algae additions. One of the things I hear a lot is a varied diet produces a more nutritionally complete diet. Varied often means switching things up, offering different foods on different days or even different times of the day. They can also mean rather than varied, what I'd call inclusive. 
a food which contains a varied diet within a single food, which is the general approach to most common pet foods. My personal favorite is often DIY frozen foods because it's varied or inclusive and often the cheapest and just a fun extension of the hobby. These frozen DIY foods are pretty inclusive approach to fish nutrition, providing a varied or inclusive diet just by chopping or blending up various seafoods, mixing in some pellets, algae, and supplements. We have a few videos on that called the DIY frozen reef chili. I'd also note that there are some inclusive foods out there like Rod's Food, ingredients of whole shrimp, whole squid, whole oyster, whole clam, whole octopus, perch, scallop, krill, pacific plankton, brine shrimp, fish eggs, green seaweed, red seaweed, purple seaweed, spinach, broccoli, carrot, mini pellets, brine shrimp, rotifers, axaxanthin, beta carotene, omega-3 fatty acids, and attractants like garlic. If pellets or dry foods are just a hard reality for your situation, like in office tanks, there's varied pellets as well. My two favorites being TDS Chroma Boost, which have some of the highest fat or protein or energy content, but also comes in the most varied sizes as well. And then the Hakari LG Extreme Pellets. Food salts like Cellcon, Aquaforest, Fish V, Vitamin Additive, Brightwell's Amino Omega, all being ways to make the foods we offer even more nutritious and support healthy tissue, mucus coats, and immune systems. There's no universally agreed on right or wrong approach to fish nutrition other than to say research, thought, and effort put into fish nutrition has a much better outcome than just picking the easiest or cheapest food out there and hoping for the best. His third piece of guidance is stay on top of your aquarium husbandry, maintain pristine water conditions, stable parameters, and avoid fish that are likely to fight. Poor water quality, fluctuating parameters, and aggression from other fish may stress the fish out, lower their immune system, and make them more susceptible to parasitic infection. I believe this speaks for itself. Stressed out fish are just more susceptible to illness and parasites. One stressed fish can be a breeding ground for a much worse tank-wide event. Water quality matters. Fish selection and introduction methods matter. Chemistry and stable temperature, alkalinity, and other parameters matter. Lastly, his fourth point is choose your fish wisely. Avoid ick magnets like fish with thin mucus coats such as tangs. Clownfish, antheas, wrasses, and even mandarins are better choices as those have thick slime coats protecting their skin from parasites. Also, only buy from reputable sources and don't buy fish that look diseased, damaged, and won't eat or share water with other diseased fish. This is probably the hardest part and where reefers tend to jump in and just hope for the best because we want the fish we want. Tangs in particular can also be incredibly valuable components of the tank cleanup crew. But even within tangs, some are absolutely worse than others. Powder blue, brown, and Achilles tangs having drastically worse survival rates than a yellow or a purple tang. If you're not quarantining, do yourself a favor and just skip the hardest for sure because it's not a gamble on just that fish, but a gamble on all the other fish that are currently in your tank and you're the only one looking out for their best interests. As it relates to fish that look sick, scratching on surfaces, not eating, or in tanks or systems with fish doing the same, move on. To put more emphasis on this, don't even think about the gamble for a moment because it's going to have a very high likelihood of a poor outcome for you, your wallet, and the rest of the tank. There's no emergency that justifies that risk. Also know that buying from a reputable source means they wouldn't even sell you that fish to begin with. If they are willing to, don't walk, run. We can only hope that the store or an experienced reefer who knows how to treat them will bring these fish back to health. This is a good time to thank those who have come before us and make all of our lives easier. Most notably, rather than hoard knowledge, they go to great lengths to share it. I'm going to leave a link in the comments to Humble Fish's thread that I've been talking about. Other than giving a quick read, stop in and let them know that you appreciate the efforts because he's helping the hobby identify and achieve those evolutionary leaps that makes us all more successful reefers and the animals thank us for it. The one piece that has started to change within the industry is the availability of proactively treated and quarantined fish, which is just very different than the visual assessment of the past. Proactively treated and quarantined are dramatically more expensive, sometimes double to triple the cost. The added 100 bucks is paying for someone to drive to the wholesaler, hand select a healthy specimen, and then maybe $3 a day to feed, treat, and care for the fish to make sure it's healthy before you get it. Elliot at Marine Collectors provides a service like that and who I personally use for all my fish. However, if you want to save some cash and do it yourself, we're working on sharing his exact method so you can do it on your own called the Marine Collectors Protocol. If you'd like to put a name to the face, we recently did a live episode with Elliot you can check out here.